Hey gang, Jeff Stone here with day 58 of the year 2015 at magicreview.com. We're taking a look at another book by Paul Carnazzo called Carnage, a collection of close-up mentalism effects from Paul Carnazzo. So there's 10 effects in here for 55 bucks. Um, and I, sh I shouldn't say 10 effects, there's 10 things. Um, there's effects and then there's concepts, I, th I guess would be a good way to say it. So I gave um, in the written review, which there's a link to it uh, in the YouTube video description section, or if you're already at magicreview.com, it's just right below the video here. Um, so, in, But in that review, uh, I, I covered all the effects, what the effect is, and enough about the method to um, not expose anything, but give you a sense of whether or not the method is, you know, doable or whatever. Um, and so, and I kind of rolled up effect method and ad copy all into one. So, the short version is four star stone status of gem. It's a very solid product. Um, there's effects in here that um, are, the, like for example, the first one, salt. Uh, it's just a simple prediction of you're holding. Uh, a coin in your hand and they the spectator tells you that what um, what coin it is and whether it's heads or tails up simple effect but the methods very clever it combines a couple of different principles um, and you can combine that by the way with his uh, thing called the white dot lesson um, which uh, could you combine it with that I'd have to think about that but let's speaking of the white dot lesson let me just tell you what that is that's that one's a concept not a trick and the concept is this we as mentalists all the time, we say, um, uh, I'm thinking of, uh, you know, let's say we're doing an invisible deck routine. I'm thinking of a playing card. Um, and in fact, I've reversed the playing card in this deck of cards right here. I want you to try to read my mind and figure out what that card is. And that's it. Well, let's just say mind reading is a real thing. Like you really could read somebody's mind. Here you are telling a lay person, yeah, just read my mind. Like, they'll go, oh, sure, I know how to do that. Okay, I'll read your mind. Or, or we do the classic, concentrate. Try to receive my thoughts. Right? Well, what Paul does here with the white dot lesson is he gives the spectator very specific instructions that this is how you read a mind. And what's clever about it is it really does seem like a real thing. Like it, and it really makes the experience feel very real for the spectator. It's a very clever idea. It's simple too. It's not like he came up with some, you know, you know, crazy, you know, brain surgery, rocket scientist type of type of thinking process here. It's just a very simple concept that he solved the problem for. And I think it's an important problem that's being solved. So it's very clever. So you can add that to your mind reading kind of effects. Um, the, the reason I was hesitant to say you could do it with salt was um, because I the way the procedure works with salt, it might not be as clear. Um, but then again, I think he actually said that he does use that with salt. So I'll have to take a look there. But anyway, that aside, I don't want to confuse the issue. Um, there's also uh, Memory Blank and the Magic Treehouse are two other concepts. The Magic Treehouse is the kind of thing where you've got a really good high percentage chance of getting a hit on a design duplication with no the the spectator is not writing anything down typical design dupe is you tell the spectator to draw a picture and then you somehow peek it or whatever and then you do a duplication of it in this case they don't draw the picture at all it's completely in their head and so this is a, a very good way to increase the odds of getting a hit but it's structured in such a way that even if you don't get a hit at all, it's still setting the stage for a, an actual design dupe. So it's still um, a, just a good springboard. But what's, and, you know, we've all seen that kind of stuff where we try something and it's a little risky and we hope we get it. But if not, our out is, well, that's all right. We were just preparing for this other thing. That's not a new thing in mentalism. But what he's done here is increase the odds, A, that you'll get the hit, <coughs> and B, the way he's done it, it ties in very well to the next step that you'll have to do if you have to go to the out. So hope that makes sense. Um, there's a hard seven, which that one, eh, I'm not sure about, guys. Uh, it's one of these things where you deliver a script to the spectator 
and you put emphasis on certain words and you say things a certain way and then you hope that that actually influences them to, to name a particular card that you want. My experience has been that that stuff just doesn't work. I mean, you sometimes get a hit here and there, but my experience has just been that it just doesn't work. So I, I, I haven't tested the way he's saying to do it, so I can't vouch for it one way or the other. And it's the kind of thing where I'd have to test it on multiple, multiple people to have any real conclusion about it. But I will say this. Again, the way he structured this for the, the case when it, you don't get the hit, it's still set up for an out that's not just a simple... Um, well, that didn't work. Let's try this. It, it ties in a little bit better than that. So he's just added a few little subtleties, I think, that make it a little bit different, a little bit better than the typical uh, effect like that, where if you get a, if you don't get a hit, um, rather than the excuse just being, well, let's just try this instead. It ties it in a little bit more nicely than that. So um, duplication is a way to get a peak. And there's no peak wallet needed or anything like that. All you need is a stack of business cards and that's it. Uh, it's actually a pretty clever thing. And if you're like in an impromptu situation and all you have is a few business cards on you, you can do this totally no problem. You don't need any special peak device. Um, this The covert over <coughs> wallet peak, <coughs> excuse me, uh, is a, a, you have to buy a special wallet, but it's a common thing that you can, find at target but it's like 30 bucks um, but he talks about a way to make that into a peak wallet and you don't actually alter the wallet itself it's just the way you handle it i guess is a good way to say it that makes it super clever i mean it's super super smart and <clears throat> it's the kind of thing where you're getting the peak right in front of them uh, i mean it might as well be this bold all right got it i mean that's effectively what you're doing but the way this is designed they don't see that and it's right in front of their face and it's and it's not this kind of thing where you took a quick peek at it and you're like oh crap did i see the word the right way or it was upside down or whatever no none of that business it's so clear so clean and so right in your face and so not in their face it's very clever but you're gonna have to spend 30 bucks so anyway there's a few other effects i'm not going to dive into all of them but what you're getting it's typical with paul carnazzo stuff it's, there's a lot of thought put into the presentation, a lot of thought put into the scripting, a lot of thought put into, it's not just, oh, okay, here's a, think of a picture, draw it, okay, now I'm going to duplicate it. It's never that way with him. It's always got some sort of a little extra hook or a little presentational angle or a little smart extra idea that takes it to a new level or a way to connect with your spectator with it. And that's the kind of stuff you're going to find in this book. Um, so if you're looking for... Um, some just, you know, I just reviewed Altriotto the other day or Altriotto, uh, from Paul Carnazzo. Um, and it um, those effects were a little bit more left of center and they were a little bit more, a little bit more different. They're a little bit different compared to typical mentalism. This particular book, it's a little bit closer to the sort of normal standard stuff you're used to, but He's added these extra layers with all these different concepts in here, uh, like the white dot lesson or the memory blank, which I don't think I told you what that is. Um, that's a, um, well, uh, it's, it's just a way to present a prediction effect. You're like, well, really, do I really need another way to present a prediction effect? Yeah, I think you do need this one. This is very smart, very clever, and it gives, it can be played very serious or very, uh, uh, comedically or comically, um, and but if you play it very serious, you you're there's a really good chance that your spectator is going to believe that you really did something to their memory. It's really really clever, really smart. So all these things they add that extra layer or level to a the deceptiveness of the effect and b to just the overall feeling of the effect in the spectator's eyes. So that's the kind of stuff you're going to find in here. So the question you got to ask yourself, is that worth $55 to you? And that's a personal question I can't answer. If you're a working professional mentalist, um, my gut says, yeah, it's worth the 55 bucks. If you're a hobbyist, <clears throat> excuse me, if you're a hobbyist that dabbles in mentalism, it may not be worth it for you, especially if you're not really doing any paid gigs. Uh, so that's a decision you're going to have to make. Um, 
but I'm just telling you, there's a, there's nothing in here that I thought was bad. Um, that no bad methods, no bad um, uh, presentational things, no none of that. They're all very good, very solid. There's a couple that I had a few kind of minor issues or questions about, which are detailed in the written review. I'll let you look at it there. Bottom line, this is a very solid book with lots of great ideas, lots of great concepts, and it's the kind of stuff that will take your mentalism to just an extra inch, an extra foot, extra yard, what's next, an extra mile, I don't know. But it just takes it to that next level. And I think that's important in mentalism, especially with how boring mentalism can be. Um, this is the kind of stuff that makes it interesting. So, four stars, Stone Status of Jim. Now, you need to like this video, subscribe to my channel, listen to the Random iTunes song of the moment, which is, yeah, a little bit of Maiden right here. Some Mellow Maiden. Strange World from the uh, very first album. Iron Maiden, Iron Maiden. Didn't know this was Maiden, did you? Let's pick it up a little bit. That's about as hard as it gets right there, guys. It's a... 80s ballad music right there anyway that's a random itunes song of the moment i'll put it a link to that uh, in the description below tune in tomorrow on day 59 where we're looking at scratch by chad long very cool that's it for this one video this video guys so uh tune in tomorrow we'll see you then thanks for watching peace out <laughs>